do. I Let's heard you were here in your lab, and I figured I would come by and ask you 21 questions. Hey, welcome to the lab. Awesome. See you. So, tell us, what do you do? Well, let me stretch real quick, <laughs> get comfortable. Uh, I'm, a film, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a film director in training. I'm featuring my debut short film in the next coming weeks, so we came at a very important time in my life. Cool. Yeah. And what got you started in photo and video? My grandparents, surprisingly, they always had a Polaroid camera, a disposable camera. Um, my grandpa was big on capturing moments and I didn't really understand the importance of them until I um, got older and, you know, looking through these as inspiration cool. for my latest film. That's awesome. So what was your first camera? Uh, my first camera was theirs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my whole life is just using other people's uh, cameras. Sure, it's the best way to learn. Yeah, just borrowing stuff. And what's your go-to camera lens now? Now, ooh, between two that I really love, um, this is the new baby. Oh, wow. This is the red Komodo, uh, you know, shooting 6K. The the baby of the red family, but very powerful. So a little different than using old disposable cameras. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And my other baby, um, iPhone. Yeah. yeah. iPhone. These guys are, I just think it's crazy how you could create a whole film, short, long, um, snackable from your phone. Absolutely. And so how did you manage the pandemic without being able to create travel photography and videos? Well, creating this space was a, a big project of mine. I usually was on the road um, most of the time. I want to say nine, throughout the year, I was rarely home, but the pandemic has allowed me to really just, I don't know, lock in on the parts of my life that needed some help, like storytelling, sure. um, educating myself, watching a bunch of master class. And yeah, I, I just, I just been, um, I was able, I was able to create from the house, which mm -hmm. was, which was, I was very fortunate because uh, YouTube and Instagram are all digital. So sure. yeah, I got, I got really, I got really lucky. That's great. And you do so much more than just create YouTube content. I know I'm not alone in loving your cinematic <laughs> style and how you create all your videos. What draws and inspires you to your specific style? My style is uh, Dragon Ball, for <laughs> sure. Dragon Ball, Super Goku's journey, I think <laughs> is uh, one of, yeah, just following his journey and uh, watching Dragon Ball as a kid uh, from Z all the way up into Super and um, a lot of anime, uh, Hayao Miyazaki, uh, one of my favorite directors, he did like Ponyo, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, uh, Spirit Away, it's probably one that everybody kind of knows. Um, but yeah, I would watch these films and I would study them and I would try to recreate compositions and, and imitate the storytelling sure. that they do um, and implement it into my, my style of storytelling. Absolutely, that's yeah. so cool. And I feel like not a lot of people know that about you. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And you do a lot of smartphone video tutorials, right? Right. Do you think smartphones like an iPhone are becoming big players in video content? Heck yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, not even just the iPhone, any mobile mm -hmm. phone. Uh, the phone that you got in your pocket, the one that you're reading off of, the <laughs> yeah. uh, the one that you're using to watch this video, <laughs> it's it's a powerful tool, and it's my my whole thing is that like you um, coming from like not having a bunch of resources when I was a kid, just trying to do uh, filmmaking, uh, just if you have a phone you, and you want to get into this world, you know you have access to YouTube to learn stuff, yeah. you got access to a camera fully functional, uh, you just gotta bring all the parts together and make it a movie. Absolutely. And where do you hope to take your brand or career next? Maybe the big screen? Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I'm debuting uh, my latest short film onto the big screen. Unfortunately, I only hit the 25, 30 minute mark, mm -hmm. which is like proper short length, short film uh, length. 
I would want to, in the future, um, uh, I aspire to create a feature length. Absolutely. So like 120 minutes of just movie time. That's yeah. great. And you've posted a lot about your new setup here, as you mentioned, the lab. Tell me about the journey of getting all of this together. It looks obviously so cool. <laughs> Look at all these lights. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's definitely been a long time coming. I remember this the same space was uh, my actual, I used to live in a studio that was the same size of this studio. Wow. Um, so it's definitely expanded <laughs> from just a desk and a computer. But I, you know, I, w I was never really like into having a big creative space. It kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. I, if you give me a laptop and like a desk anywhere, I could, I could make something sure. for you. Like, it's it's just one of those things where like I had a bunch of time so like now I got the YouTube set up mm -hmm. over here I got this uh, set up where it's like kind of just my tools and it's kind of cluttered too and you can't <laughs> see the workout area but we have that that was from pandemic um, bunch of working out in front of the house and this area is like my main uh, focus area you can see like the we got the city as the backdrop. Yeah. Um, Watch supposed, the sun go down. Yeah, the sun sets nice, and it's a. Uh, when I open the windows, you can see, you can hear the city, mm -hmm. and it's a. Uh, we got it closed right now because <laughs> of the, because of the video, but it's a. Yeah, I just love living in New York City. That's awesome, and so you mentioned a big project that you're working on. Tell me about it. Yeah, so my life, Oakland Three, is a. Um, it's the third edition to, uh, the series called My Life, Oakland. My Life, Oakland was a. It's a, it's a personal journey of mine uh, on YouTube to where I got started as a creator from meeting my friends and people I grew up with to learning about early life. And I grew up uh, in inner city of East Oakland and there's, a, there's not a lot of filmmakers per se mm -hmm. um, that get the opportunity to sort of tell their story. So I've uh, built my own platform and from, you know, from the ground up um, learned everything I needed to learn to, to get a movie together, casted my friends and my family, um, and just people who I grew up with, which was one of the most important things. Uh, to play in this film that paints a picture of my life um, from the age of six. So it's kind of like a timepiece, and it's also um, my sort of yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really important piece for me. It's one of the most challenging pieces. Mm -hmm. It's uh, technically and uh, the storytelling wise is, is pretty difficult. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. Yeah, I can't guys wait see to it. see it. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so switching it up a little bit, what are some tips for someone who wants to start capturing cinematic video like you do, even if it's on their phone? Ooh, <laughs> got you. This is my favorite game. I hate advertising this gimbal because it's, it's out of, um, they don't make these anymore, but just any any phone gimbal. Mm -hmm. This is the Movi, for instance. And like I put my phone on like that. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Charge your gimbals. But, I trust you that it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a mobile gimbal. It just pretty much like stabilizes everything. Sure. And the size of it um, just fits like so. That's cool. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> and so what has been one of the coolest shoots you've been on? One of the coolest shoots I've been on uh, My Life Oakland 3. It's, it's, it's been a crazy experience. I'm gonna have a bloopers uh, reel too. <laughs> Perfect. But, yeah. And what has been one of the most challenging shoots? I have to say the same, but <laughs> yeah, but just to, just to, I guess, dive a little deeper, I think um, I think shooting my first uh, mobile film, it's just getting the technical parts, like from filming it to getting the clips off of my phone onto my laptop or just editing it on my phone and then trying to figure out a way to publish it you know, to YouTube and upload it in 4K, mm -hmm. um, even before there was 4K. So I think, um, yeah, when I, when I was first getting started with my mobile filmmaking stuff, that was tough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, shooting or editing? Yeah, <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah. If you had to just choose one forever. Had to choose one. 
Directing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I, I, I love the whole, every single element that's involved in the filmmaking process. Mm -hmm. I love all of it. That's great. Yeah, that's good. California or New York City? <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> California for the tacos, uh -huh, for sure. Yeah. And then New York for the hustle and bustle. Absolutely. And if you could only shoot one forever, drone or mirrorless camera? Ooh, that's kind of tough. Because with the drone, <laughs> I said camera. I think a, an actual camera will always be. Um, it's just something about yeah. I don't go to the camera. Okay. What do you guys think? That's that's interesting. That's one. a good one. Yeah. Bucket list shoot. Ooh. Bucket list shoot. You know, I live in New York and like, you know, the Knicks did pretty good, the Nets did pretty good, but like working with the Warriors, for me, just being from Oakland, mm -hmm. um, Warriors, Raiders, or A's, that, you know, that'd be a bucket list for me. Perfect. And if you weren't a photographer and a filmmaker, what would you be? Shoot. <laughs> uh, not to dive too deep into it, but originally um, when, I, when I was doing my bachelor's, I was a criminal justice major. So I was trying to become like a PO officer or just like, wow. just helping the, the youth. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to become a cop originally um, because I, there was one cop who like really changed the course of my life. So I wanted to like pay that, pay that back in, mm -hmm. in my own way. But I, I found an outlet through like YouTube and like social media sure. to tell stories that would, you know, pave a way for, for those kids who probably didn't have the right proper guidance. That's awesome. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, there's two. Okay. Um, my grandpa, um, RIP, but he, he said, never forget where you came from. So my family's from Vietnam, uh, came, you know, came to during the Vietnam War as refugees. So that, you know, I got my grandpa tatted across my chest because, I, you know, I wouldn't have this life without mm -hmm. um, what he, you know, what he sure. to do. And my pops, my pops, uh, he he said, "Be cool, stay in school." So <laughs> that's good advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and aside from your camera and lens, what's your favorite piece of gear? Ooh, favorite piece of gear. Um, did I have one? Oh, let me grab it. <laughs> This is an old school one too. This is an OG. This is the Ronin S. But yeah, I would consider like any gimbal, mm -hmm. like it's kind of, I don't know, I'm Asian, whatever. Uh, like my samurai sword. So like, you feel me? I could just <laughs> pop out and Perfect. throw the camera on the gimbal and just get some crazy like cinematic <laughs> shots. And I just, you know? <laughs> Since this one, let me see, hopefully this one. Oh, this one had battery. Look at this one. The DJI Osmo Mobile 4. So like you seen the big gimbal, right? But like this gimbal, you can't count out. You can't count these, can't count these phones out. Especially when it shoots 4K. So just like that. Live demo. Oh yeah. So that, I mean, I did that in like what, a couple seconds? Yeah. So yeah, you know? Perfect. This is like the uh, handgun. <laughs> <laughs> and if there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Who would play me? I'd probably play myself. <laughs> but you're the one directing it. I guess you could also be in it too. But <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna there try. There we go. Perfect. Take some classes. <laughs> and last question: Who should we interview next? Let's go with. Um, the homie, uh, Steve Sweatpants, Mr. Oh, Sweatpants. We actually already interviewed him. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Damn, my bad. Um, didn't think about this. All right, well, the homegirl then, uh, Miss Hatton. Perfect. Natalie. Awesome, then we'll call her right up. I know you're busy editing, so I'll let you get back to it. And hey. thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>